every once in a while the newspaper will run an article and I just have to respond. <laughs> and this one was unique in that I could respond supporting what was written. Because in the world of the Shasta County Interfaith Forum, we're the odd man out. <laughs> and so if I can share, because I know they all read the paper, if I can share it this way, they can ponder it without you know, daring to ask me a question. <laughs> anyway, it's fun. And then we have many neighbors who are very fundamentalists and they never ask me what I think, so they can read it in the paper. <laughs> so I enjoy doing that. And um, you never know, you know. So the reading that Damien did was from this wonderful, anybody a Ram Dass lover? Oh my, oh good, good, love the guy. It's called Cookbook for Awakening, the Core Teachings of Ram Dass. And it's full of photos of everywhere he's been and uh, gurus and oh, the stories. Oh my God, I love it. So that's available obviously from his website. But I thought it fit this because where does happiness start? When you see the beloved all around you, everyone is family, everyone is love, everywhere is love. That is true happiness. Amen. Hey. <laughs> and... Um, I'll get to that in a minute. So I all, I recognize that all of you understand, or hopefully understand, that happiness isn't out there. You don't grab it. it. It's not something that will make you happy. Now, all the money in the world will not make a person happy, but don't you want to try it just once? <laughs> I do. Just to see, you know, just to see. Having the, a job in the highest level of an organization, um, that's not true happiness, trust me, <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> and Jesus said it this way, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Now we know the soul is never lost, but sometimes we can feel lost in the world. Or we can feel the world is totally lost, I don't know, take your pick. Uh, but that's never the case either, because whatever darkness we perceive, Ernest Holmes writes, it's just a state of confusion. We're confused. So the source of our supply is never really cut off. It just seems to pause when we're confused. We know our beliefs are causal energy. Our beliefs cause experiences in our life through us, because it's based on the energy we're giving to our subconscious mind, it's our thoughts and beliefs. When we buy into the negativity in the world, the law accepts our beliefs as, hey, you focused on it, obviously you want more of it. And we experience that. And so sometimes we are very separated from our happiness, very separated from it. I remember several years ago, one of our practitioners was saying, I have a job I cannot stand, I'm overwhelmed, I need a break, I need a break, I need a break, and she fell and broke her shoulder. Mm -hmm. She eventually went back to work in the same job, same state of overwhelm, and she fell and broke her arm. Now, she came back to the practitioner meeting, she says, tell everybody. <laughs> because what I didn't do was change my thinking. And the law always responds to what we're focused on. It's almost like having a prison in our mind that we can't break out of. Because not all prisons have walls or bars or fences. But some people feel immensely imprisoned in a job or looking at a stack of bills on the, on the desk or feeling trapped in poverty some people have great addictions to things. It's a prison of our mind. And the radio, newspaper, and TV are going, it's worse than you thought, and there's nothing you can do about it. And we go, okay. Uh. <laughs> That's a real prison when we're caught up in that. So I was going to say one of my favorite books, but it's not a favorite, but it's a precious book of mine. It's called, We're All Doing Time. <laughs> Bo Lozoff. It's an amazing book. Because he was a prisoner at one time, and when he got out, he joined an ashram. 
and he met Ram Das. And his is back in 1973, and he and Ram Das started the Prison Ashram Project. And there are thousands and thousands of his books circulating in the prison system around the country. He's written about 10 books. This is, this is my favorite because relating to what it means to do time. In this book, he teaches meditation. He teaches prayer. He teaches mindfulness. He teaches love. And then he has about half of it is letters that corresponding with prisoners who are trying to get it. They're trying to understand. So if you even feel imprisoned in your mind, this would be an interesting book to read. It feels the same way, to be imprisoned in our mind or behind bars. Bo talks about the two worlds that we live in, the world of outer appearances and the inner world of spirit. He says, everything out here is just a prop to help us learn things. Dion can relate to that when you develop props for the, the plays you give. It's just a thing to help us. In the world of spirit, the true goal is finding lasting inner peace and happiness. Lasting inner peace and happiness. But as he writes to some of these prisoners, you know, sometimes it's, we get into life, we just kind of plod along. We get born, we have good times and bad times. We have all the different emotions, love, anger, fear. We face various problems and challenges, good or bad, and we learn some things and we're forever wondering about some things. And then we move into the unknown when we die. Did we find lasting peace and happiness this time around? In the end, people like you, seekers for the truth, will be the ones that find out. There was a 2012 report from the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation that said 65% of prisoners released from the California prison system return within three years. I think it'd be a lot clearer to call it the California Department of Incarceration, not Rehabilitation. And it's sad, it's very sad to me about that. But recently I learned some really good news that the Shasta County Probation Department offers a whole array of classes for people that want to get out on probation. One of the most interesting ones is Moral Recognition Therapy, MRT. And the major objective is to help the offender's decision-making process to deal with reality, to go from more low moral reasoning to a much higher moral reasoning that deals with what life is really like. It's been proven that it reduces recidivism, which is the return to jail, return to jail. One study showed that 21% of the offenders that participate in regular therapy groups uh, end up back in prison within three months, but only 9% of the ones in the MRT program that finish it. I think that's amazing, that it's offered here in Shasta County, amazing, just amazing. One of the first steps for these people in the MRT program is understanding how things really work in the world. How do relationships work? How does it work to go find a job? Come in looking like a slob or come in with a resume? All the different things that maybe they just didn't learn in life at that point. He said, when we're born, he's writing to these persons, when we're born, you know, when you're hungry, you cry. And mama comes and helps. And you find that if you can manipulate people, you can get the help you think you need. And so if you're an older child, you might want something and throw a temper tantrum to get it. And maybe you as a teenager used manipulation to get something that you wanted. I know for early teenagers it becomes a habit. But the problem becomes when it's a game of life. When you're an adult and you think you have to manipulate others to get what you want. When it comes to basic needs, food, shelter, clothing, some people 
get the idea that there's not enough. Not enough money, not enough jobs. I don't have enough control over my life. There's a never-ending list of who's to blame, but they never blame themselves. A key part of the MRT program. And so they can get to a place where it feels so unfair, no matter what they do, doesn't matter. I, I, I hate to even think of having a feeling like that. But so many pe people in jail and in prison do. It's just not fair. In Bo's book, he writes, he, re <laughs> he receives a letter from an inmate who wrote, I can't understand why, why my life is not going in the direction I wish it to go in. I've been in and out of prison. I pray, but my ego takes control and I do something I regret and I end up back in, this time for another 10 years. Help me get a grasp on what I'm not understanding. I need your advice. So here's what Bo wrote. Your image of starting all over again is part of what keeps throwing you off. The spiritual journey takes a lot of ups and downs. You seem to think it's a straight ladder, a straight line. You just pray and you get up there and you got it. You're not getting, and you think you're not getting to the top, so you must be thinking you're still on the bottom. That's not the way it works. Like it or not, everything that's happened is part of your journey. Your violence shows you're still stumbling over the same stuff as before. And I'll make a wild guess that you were tanked up when you blew it up this time. Changing old behavior patterns requires a lot of work. And you have to do the work. You can slide back into reading spiritual books and pray for yourself and tell yourself how much you've changed, but the next time you're out, you'll just be another sucker. It's not your destiny to go on like this. It's an old pattern, and patterns can be broken with enough self-honesty. Part of self-honesty is taking full responsibility for your life. Full responsibility. You know, that's one of the things we learn here early when we come into the science of mind philosophy. We learn that, yeah, unhappiness can be part of our life. It's because we chose it. We made the decisions that created the unhappiness. So we get it right off, the power of our own decision. Because wherever we've been before we've come here, we've likely accumulated a lot of negative baggage and it builds up in subconscious mind only to show up in life. Like our practitioner, I need a break. Don't say that. <laughs> the ego can fool us in saying, well, the baggage is just who I am. You know, I just, I just, um, it's just the way I grew up. But unhappiness is not normal. It's not normal. But the ego says, I've always been this way. No problem. It's not who we are. Bo wrote in another letter, Happiness isn't a measure of bad things not happening to us. It's a measure of how we deal with everything that comes down the pike. Everything. To really get serious about unloading your suffering and making some changes, you've got to let go of all the cop-outs and self-deceptions that you've carried around with you since you were born. You're wasting the present by being trapped in the past. Do you know anybody like that? Wasting the present by being trapped in the past. So the real trick to get happy is to get our conscious mind and subconscious mind full of the same good stuff. So they're working in harmony. So we can reach our potential. There's another new book out. I don't know why. I'm just a nut about books for self-help. It's not even in print yet. It's just being um, advertised. It's called Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. His childhood was a nightmare, poverty, prejudice, physical abuse, but through self-discipline and tough mental activities and hard work, he transformed himself from a depressed, overweight young man with no future into U.S. Armed Forces icon, and he's one of the world's top endurance athletes. He's the only man in history 
History's been going on a long time. He's the only man in history that has completed elite training as a Navy SEAL, an Army Ranger, and an Air Force tactical air controller. Amazing. He set many records in endurance events. So Outside Magazine, Outside Magazine named him the fittest real man in America. I love it. I know it's going to be a good book. There's going to be so many science of mind principles in there. There's going to be so many practices. I mean, you don't get there without the essence of this philosophy, no matter what you call it. In his book, he will tell us that most of us tap only 40% of our capacity. He calls it the 40% rule. And he tells how to get past the pain, how to get past the fear and reach potential. So I'll let you know what I find when I get that book and I inhale it in one day. I'm sure that's what I'll do. <laughs> Am I at 50% now? I don't know. <laughs> so to begin to take control of our life, we have to admit we are the source of our problems. If you're still working on that, please sign up for a certificated Science of Mind course because you will learn that and you will learn why and you will learn how and you will learn the process of getting back to true happiness because the creative process really works. Some people don't know, but I think the world's starting to wake up too. There is a process to create experiences in our life. But sometimes if we lack honesty with ourselves, we don't want to go there. But if we really want to avoid pain, and we really want to be honest, and we really want to commit to change, this is the way to do it. In the January newsletter, Diane already talked about it, but we're having our first online class on Saturday mornings. Lucinda Alton will be doing that on Zoom. And The Power of Decision is the first class. I love that class. It's one of the most practical classes we do. The power to be happy, the decision to be healthy, the decision to have great relationships, the decision to have a great work life. It's all in there. And so we get rewarded by being honest with ourselves. Maybe at some point a light goes on in your mind and you go, oh, I've been trying to get the world to conform to my negative beliefs because I'm right. Wait a minute. How much happiness comes from that? The truth is you have to walk away from that prison. That is a prison in your mind. Our problems are not the fault of the world. There's something there that is sidetracking us from being truly happy. We call it spiritual mind treatment, how we can help you return to that level of happiness. And in spiritual mind treatment, we... Um, we talk about it like a garden. The process is like a garden. Because we say you have a seed, which is your belief, and you plant it in mind, and it goes into subconscious mind, which is the soil. And we water it, and we water it, and we water it. It draws like energy, and it creates a plant or an experience in our life. That's how it works. And it's been known for thousands of years in different ways. And Thomas Troward taught it, and Ernest Holmes taught it, and now I'm seeing it appear in many places, especially with Bo and his work with the prisoners. So as we approach the new year, I put something in your program today, if you could take a look at it. It's a folded over page. And it comes from the MRT idea of being responsible for your life, but once you grasp that, where are the goals in your life that are going to make you a happier person? So there's three sets of goals for one year, five year, and ten years. And in the first year, I suggest you do this in a quiet place, maybe with a cup of coffee at Starbucks or something. Year one, right now the diagnosis is in. You only have one year to live. What do you really want to do? Where do you want to live? Where's the money going to come from? How will you spend your time? Will that make you really happy? Then you work on a five-year plan. 
The medication worked for a while, but three doctors now agree you only have five years to live. Repeat the questions. Take a good look at your answers. And then for 10 years, the therapy has improved, but it's only temporary, and at this rate, you only have 10 years to live. So they may be different, and you may have different answers for these. But if you don't look at what goal you can have to make you truly happy, how are you gonna get there? You're just gonna meander along. The goal statement should be specific, reasonable. I wanna to go to the moon, I don't know about that. <laughs> Measurable, you get the postcard or the t-shirt. And under your control. Not that somebody else is gonna give you a million dollars to go do that. So focusing on goals, help us understand what our own individual soul is calling for, is calling for us to do, to love, to be loved, to give love, to share love. This is the most powerful creative energy you can do, getting really clear about what will make you happy. And then I included some affirmations there to help you on a daily basis stay on track. Bo wrote to one of the prisoners, Recognizing we're all doing time is simply encouragement for each of us to look inward to find the place in ourselves which is at peace with who we are, at peace with all the guesses and decisions we make as we move through life. Recognizing what we value and the ability to share it with others has a direct relationship to happiness. Happiness is not a destination, it's a state of mind and it's a worthy goal to achieve that in the new year. So my offering to you this morning, make this master plan for happiness and you can begin today. So let's pray on that. In this sense of peace, I, uh, I feel happiness. Happiness that I recognize you as part of the divine creation, as I am part of the divine creation, as Judy and her talents are part of the divine creation, as Sandra and Adrian and their beautiful singing are part of the divine creation and every child in the children's cottage and every person you meet on the street, homeless or not, are all part of the divine creation. Our goal is to give them love. That's all. Love. And when we don't, we're creating the prison of our own mind because the creative process responds to that. It responds to that negative energy and assumes we want more of it. So this morning I say no more. Happiness and love, happiness and love, happiness and love. That's who we truly are. So I accept this science of mind philosophy as mine my way of being, my way of singing, seeing, my way of acting in every moment. Yes, we fall down, we stand up, we turn right and should have turned left, but we're all still learning. So much to learn, but we have an eternity to do it in. So I choose for you and me happiness now peace now so that this afternoon and tomorrow and the next day we can carry that energy with us and impact people around us in ways we'll never know so I give thanks for all this goodness the teaching brings all the goodness the Bo Losloffs of the world bring to others that Ram Das is still kicking and teaching in Hawaii and how much he impacts the world. All of these people are giving the best they can for peace and happiness. So I let go of any fear, 
knowing I'm grabbing it, I'm taking it, and I'm working to be it. And the new year is a perfect time to commit to that. And then we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Thank you, Spirit, for this time and opportunity to present these ideas to you. And I'm so grateful. And so it is. <laughs>